morning everybody. I hope everybody's having a good day today. Um, sorry, it's still early here, so I'm sipping on my coffee, but I thought today um, I'm starting on some new journals, and I thought I really want to spend some time on my machine. You know I love to sew. So I've got multiple projects in the plan today, but um, the first one I want to do is a batch of uh, ruffles fabrics, you know, for the um, journals. So I thought, well, I'll show you guys how I do it. Um, I'm sure there's tutorials on YouTube for it, but we'll just get started. I'm um, going to just try to get a mix of fabrics. Uh, and, you know, when you're out at the thrift store and, and places, like this was a, um, a remnant I picked up at a car boot, and it's a thin one, and at first glance you think, well, what can I do with something that's so narrow? But these are perfect for um, the snippets, so I just start by um, tearing those down, and you have to go, you know, with the grain of the fabric, and if you're new to this, you'll learn very quick, because if you don't <clears throat> tear it in the right direction, it's going to come out really distorted. And I will say this, guys, it, how nice these come out depends on the quality of your material. Because I purchased, I told you guys, just to get a bit more variety in my stash, I purchased some of this um, fabric off of Amazon. <clears throat> and... The patterns are pretty, but it is awful, awful quality. And I've even tried tearing this in each direction. And it's just, uh, that one's actually come out okay. But it's such poor quality fabric, so do be aware of that. Um, see, that's that's all. Yeah. So these, what I've, what I've decided to do on these is I just... I just cut a strip because it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it does look nicer if it's hand torn, but um, you know, I'm not going to throw that material out just because it doesn't um, give me as nice a result. But these, I just thought this was a really fresh and pretty um, pattern. So I thought, oh, yeah, and that guy that I buy off of, he's so reasonable. Um, I'll do this one a little bit wider. I can go to him. He gets a lot of just these little off cuts, and I can go to him with an armful, and he'll have a pound, maybe two pounds. Um, and it's stuff that most people who are making a project wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be able to use, but I can. That's enough of that color. Let me just move on. Yeah, this is another of that. It's, it's really poor quality, these are. Um, but I'm not going to waste them, so... But yeah, that's what I tend to do when I go out. And I know um, when I was in Tallahassee, I had a couple, couple of really good little thrift stores there. Um, because I don't, I don't um, support the Goodwill anymore. They, their policies are horrible. Um, they claim to be a charitable organization, and they're not. So I, I've stopped purchasing from them, but I had a couple of little local thrift stores and I could get some stuff. And the other thing is when people get to know what you're looking for, um, you know, they'll sometimes, you know, if they like you, they'll they'll set it to the side if they know that you're a regular and going to be in there. So that's good too. That's all I'm going to worry about on that one. I just want to try to get a nice mix of colors. I'm not mad on, on that one, so I'll sit that to the side. And this is what I tend to do, is I just grab up, I'll show you guys the stack. I'll probably never get through, that's pretty, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's a, i got to do some of those. I've never done any in that pattern. Um, I just tend to grab up, I'll show you, my. this is my pile. But having said that, one of them is massive. <clears throat> I showed this. I got this um, Sunday. And this is a big old piece. I don't know. I'm, I haven't even opened it up to be honest. But it's huge. But look at the wildflower pattern. So I'm going to do a few out of that. But I'm thinking this is going to be some um, three signature uh, tomes. You know, the Nick the Booksmith tomes. This is going to be beautiful to do some 
and then maybe a book plate and you know just keeping it really simple because with this pattern I don't think I'd want to do much with it but I wanted to try to cut this down in a, in a bit and get a, get some ruffles made out of that. Um, what was I talking about? Oh gosh, I don't know. I've lost my trace. See, look at that. See how that's wonky? Yeah. I'm just going to have to cut that because that's pretty. I'm, I want to get some nice ruffles out of this. So, um... I don't even know what I was talking about. I'm so sorry. I lose my train of thought when I get on here. Because um, my mind, you know, I just so many things I want to tell you guys. And and then you're just all over the place. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah. Um, last night, we finished a show here. Uh, and I can't recall which network covered it, but it's called the Dementia Choir. And I know in the U.S. you can often get um, British programming, so if you guys, I don't know if that will come on it or not, but it was really, it was a two-part. And um, you guys know dementia runs in, the, in our family, so my dad's got it, and my uncle uh, had it. Um, so, it, you know, obviously I'm interested in it. Um, it was a two-part, and they did a study on how music affects, you know, patients with dementia. And it was absolutely fascinating. Um, you know, it's early days on the studies, and they can't make any claims, but... Um, when they monitored some of the patients, they put them in this, you know, they had all these electrodes on their head, and um, they could monitor the brain activity, and it was amazing that when the, the patients were listening to music, the brain activity was equal to that of a normal person. Whereas, you know, when the music wasn't on and they could show, you know, the areas of the brain that have been affected by um, dementia, you know, and the areas that had, you know, weren't active anymore, it was just incredible. And these people got so much out of being a part of that choir because obvious, for obvious, you know, had something... Um, to be in with a group of people who are going through what you are is very important with those, you know, this kind of thing. But it was so moving. Oh, my gosh. You had to have a box of tissue beside you because um, we were both boohooing. But it was very, really interesting. So if you get a chance to watch that, it is, it is really, really fascinating. They have some great documentaries here, I will say. Um, I think the programming in the UK is better uh, for the stuff I enjoy. Um, I think they do some really great documentaries here, and I enjoy that. But it wasn't too, too long back. Um, we did, uh, they did one on Along the Silk Road. And they took this woman that hosted, you know, that hosted it. She took the journey of how the travelers would have gotten silk across and uh, exploring, you know, each country. And it was just so interesting because it just opened your eyes up to so many places in the world that you've never really thought that you'd be interested in in visiting, and I'll be honest, I'm, I've never cared about going to, uh, you know, Middle Eastern countries. Uh, it's just the terrain doesn't appeal to me. But this, after watching this, there's a couple of places um, that have come up into my top ten. I don't know if I'll ever be able to go because they're very expensive to get to. They're a long ways away. It's surprising. Um, but that's another great series. It's called Along the Silk Road, and I think her name is Joan. Um, 
Oh, gosh, I'll have to look that up. It's Joanna something. It was hosted by her, but I love those kind of shows because um, I'm really interested in in the world and traveling and so yeah I enjoyed that because um, it was just really she went to some places like I said that you know you just doesn't tend to come up on the radar for travel I and I like places that aren't touristy that's what I'm drawn to is more you know the world real world and how people live and the differences so I, I love watching documentaries when they come on. More so than, I guess, um, the series these days. Because, um, I mean, I like a good crime series, but it's got to be done in a certain kind of way. There's one over here called Vera, and I love that show because it, it doesn't, it's nothing gruesome. Um, I don't want to watch all that. You know, when they start, like, Silence of the Lamb and all that kind of... It's just too much. Too much. It's, you know, I like a, a crime drama, but I don't want to see all the gore. You can just say, we found a body, and everybody knows th what that means. I don't want, want to see it. <laughs> but, um... So, yeah, from that point of view, um, you know, most of them the series that are out now, they just don't even appeal to me. I try not to watch much TV. I'm not going to do these. Oh, that's kind of retro, isn't it? That's a cool pattern. Gosh, yeah, that's very 70s. Hmm, I'll do a strip of that. Gosh, I, I'm going to be here for hours doing what I've cut up so far. Um, So yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to watch much TV, um, but in the evening sometimes you just need to wind down before, um, especially if you're on the computer much. Boy, I cannot go from the computer to um, to bed. My brain is just in overdrive if I do that. So I've been trying, you know, which is why you may have noticed I'm not that active on uh, some of the groups, but it's I just have to cut back on my... Um, the time on, on social media, it's just getting to be too much um, because it's a, you know, I'm not sleeping great at this point in my life anyways. And that is, I can always tell if I've, if I've been on the computer um, just before bed because uh, it's, it's just my brain is not wanting to, um, to uh, go to sleep. It's, it's wide awake. This is such a pretty print, but boy, this paint, this soft fabric is really not good quality. I wouldn't recommend. Only reason I do it here is because um, where I'm at, I'm very limited on fabric stores, and I don't want to give the impression that there aren't fabric stores or craft stores in the UK because there are, but it's just the area that I'm in and. Um, I don't tend to get out, and it's not the sort of place I'm going to drag my husband to because he wouldn't enjoy it. So I don't tend to get out on my own that much. So that's why I've had to go to um, using Amazon, unfortunately, and I don't like to do that. I'd rather support local businesses, and I do as much as I can, but um, that's how I ended up with this. Um, I did have loads of fabric I had purchased um, at, back home, but I had to put it in storage. I couldn't bring it, and just in the end, I had to be so ruthless on what I could bring over, and it grieves me to think that I'm buying stuff here that I've got sitting in a storage unit. It's crazy, but what can you do? Okay, guys, this is, at this point, I'm going to move over to the machine, and I'll just, um, I'm just going to do a couple on camera because I know you don't want to listen to that sewing machine going. It's going to be loud. But I want you to see it's so easy, so easy to make these. So let's move over there and I'll do a couple of these on camera. And, and that way you guys will know how I do it. And that's that. I'll see you in a minute. 
Okay guys, we're here in front of the machine and I'm hoping you can get a reasonable view with that. I This is the best I can come up with, I'm afraid. Um, so let's, let me just show you. Um, I take my little, this is a Stampin' Up! Uh, piercing tool. I think Tim Holtz, I'm sure Tim Holtz has got one, so this is how I do it. I just first start my ruffle by just folding that, let me see if you can see that, I just folded that over just to get me started and I put that under the uh, foot, I think that's what that's called. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably the worst person to be teaching this. Um, I've found that I like the zigzag for the ruffles, but um, I, you know, I vary it from from zigzag to a straight stitch. But today I've got the zigzag, um, and you're going to have to play around with your machine because it will do no good for me to tell you what setting. Um, just practice on. Uh, somebody told me to practice on some paper, your stitches, and then that way you know your machine is um, doing what it's supposed to be doing. So what I do is I just take this little tool. And I hope this is showing up. Um, and I just scrunch that up because I try to keep my uh, ruffles evenly spaced, but that's me because you guys know I'm a little bit crazy about things being precise. Um, and then w that's what I'm going to do. You'll, you'll see the process as I move along and hopefully my hand isn't in the way. So let's get started. Now, I probably should have done this with the black thread so you guys could see it, but um, hopefully it'll show up. And then just snip off so you can see that's how it's come out. And they're so easy. I'll do another one, and I'll try to keep my hand out of the way, but obviously um, this, is, this is how I make them. And it's a really simple process there. Again, I've just started it, put it under the foot, and drop that down, and then go ahead and get your other one in place. Okay, so there you go, you can see that. Alright, so I'll do one more and then that should get you guys started. Uh, let me do it on a black pattern, so maybe that will show up a little bit better. I wasn't thinking or I would have put my black thread in because I have to say I am loving the black thread on these ruffles. It's really, really pretty. Okay guys, hopefully that's showing up. So easy. Okay, 
So there you go. Hopefully you can see a little bit better here. That's the ones we just made. Super, super easy. And in case anybody asked, get... Let me see here. The end result is about five and a half inches if you start off with a strip that is... Most of my strips are about 11 inches long, but that's going to vary on how tightly you do those um, those ruffles. So I just thought I'd show you. This is my little this is my little storage thing that I keep them in, and I've just done various ones because sometimes it's just nice to have the small ones, and then you can take and uh, with these small ones just get a couple of little buttons and you can just stitch a couple little buttons there and then just have that on the top of your page um, lots of stuff you can do with them I just uh, I try to get you know get a bunch of them done in advance uh, I think I think that's all see these are some small I know I've got some small ones in here I don't know why those are in there oh I don't know. <laughs> there we go. There's a small one that I've stitched a, a button to, so that's all ready um, to add to the journal. I don't know. There's a couple pieces here and there that need doing. Yeah, I don't know why those are in there. But anyways, that shows you guys. Um, that's how I do it. I try to do these in a batch. Um, there's another one. Isn't that sweet? Love that pattern. So that's how I do it, guys. I just try to do them in advance. Um, you know, spend maybe half a day um, on these. Um, sometimes I'll do some fabric pockets. Here I did um, some snippet rolls. So why don't I just plan on the next, in one of the future um, tutorials, I'll do a little snippet roll for you guys if, if you... Um, are interested in seeing that because there again that's going to be in front of the machine a lot um, so if you're interested in that just let me know and we'll do we'll plan to do that in a future uh, video so anyways guys that's um that's my create with me today I appreciate you guys joining and I hope that you get the chance to make something really really nice today and I will see you back here soon bye <music>